Okay, today's tutorial we are going to learn how to make really cool watercolor stenciled portraits like this illustration by Stina Person, who's one of my favorite illustrators. Um, Stina Person works on a lot of freelance and has a lot of advertising clients and she's really well known for doing these watercolor silhouettes. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a portrait of ourselves, we're going to mask it so that it is... Um, cut out of a textured watercolor background like this. So we're going to first make it kind of like a stencil so that it has to be just only black and white areas of our portrait. So in Photoshop I have a portrait of myself here that I'm going to use and I am going to first free up the background layer. I have opened the, the image layer that I want to work with I've also gone to the Fine Art Server folder in the Demos folder, and I have opened up in Photoshop two different watercolor images. Now I've already changed the color of this one, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I have a sunburst watercolor background, and I have a kind of freeform watery watercolor background that you can choose from for these purposes. And then you have your portrait. So what we're going to do first is we're going to free up the background layer of our portrait by double clicking on the background next to this lock. So I'm going to click and then it says new layer and I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to do an adjustment layer because I want to be able to play with the um, edited qualities of what my stencil is going to look like in black and white. So I'm going to go to threshold. You could also go to Posterize and do only two levels, but I'm going to choose Threshold because it gives me greater ability to change what's black and white areas. So I can slide this threshold to give me a, a decent selection. I'm going to focus mostly on my facial features and make sure I get a good selection with those. because they're, they're easier to not fix later. So I have my Threshold layer. Then I'm going to highlight the Picture layer right here. And I'm going to dodge and burn to lighten and darken. Burn will darken, dodge will lighten my actual picture. So I'm going to dodge the areas of my hair that I want to show up a little bit better. So I will lighten these areas. So if, if I want some more detail to show up, I can dodge it. If I want it to, to burn and give me some more of the black highlighted areas, like get some of my ear back, get some of my nose back, my eyebrows. Um, then I can play with this until I have a result that I'm happy with. Um, if you don't like it, you can hit Control Z for undoing a click where you've done too much dodging and burning. Um, so I'm going to get something that I'm relatively happy with because this is what is going to be cut out of my watercolor. So I want to get a good enough result here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to merge this down so that it is the same thing as if I had gone to image adjustments and done threshold right here without dodging and burning. So now I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge down. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this image over to my two watercolor pictures by using the move tool, selecting it, dragging it, highlighting the top one, and dropping it down. So here it is. I have my watercolor image and I have my black and white threshold image. My watercolor image, I've already changed the color and I'll show you how I did that. I highlighted the layer, I freed up the background, I went to image, adjustments, and I did um, hue and saturation it gives you this window I clicked colorize and then I changed the hue and I found a color that I thought fit my picture better and you can change the saturation of how intense the color is or how gray the color is so I had something kind of in this range it can also be lighter or darker and I clicked OK so now I'm gonna set up my document what I need is I need a background layer that is just the watercolor. Then I need to duplicate that layer by right clicking and duplicating layer. You're going to give me this and I will click OK. Then I'm going to click on my bottom layer and I'm going to make a new layer in between 
those two layers. So I have two watercolor images that are exactly on top of each other and exactly the same with one layer in between. And I'm going to make sure my foreground color is white. I'm going to take the paint bucket and I'm going to fill in white. So I have essentially watercolor, a white piece of paper, and the same exact watercolor underneath it. I'll show you why you need that in a minute. I'm going to make sure my top layer is visible again. And I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to place this in a creative way so that my shoulders line up with these lines right here and I think it'll work with the watercolor ink blot. Then I'm going to go to select and color range and I'm going to sample the image color that is white. I'm going to click OK. So in color range you can click on the color that you would like for it to select. So since I have so much contrast it'll be white color and the white color will all be selected. Click OK. You can see the pixels are highlighted everywhere that is white. I'm going to highlight the layer that is the top watercolor image layer and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. What that does is it erases everything that is white on that layer. All I have to do is hit Control D or Edit Deselect and it will get rid of my marching ants. My selection lines, I'm going to go to the layer one and I make it invisible. Now you can see that my image has been cut out and the positive and negative white and black has been cut out of the watercolor. These bottom two layers are for cleaning up and making this the way I want it to look. I don't love the way this looks right here above my shoulder and I don't love this edge because this edge is too strong. So what I do is I click on the white piece of paper and I can erase that and reveal the bottom layer of the watercolor underneath. So all I'm going to do is erase where I want to erase. And you can be really artistic with this and make some cool decisions to make it look good for your picture. So you can make it show up the way you want. You can also change the opacity of the eraser so that it only partially erases and you can get some kind of subtle, subtle areas here where you mess with that. Okay, if you don't like it, you take a white paintbrush and you can take, um, make sure your opacity is 100% and you can paint back in where you don't want it to be. So if you don't like the way it took that out of my hair, I can paint that back in. So here we have my um, watercolor ink blot. You could also do this on this layer. All you have to do is take the picture, drag it, highlight, drop, move it where you would like it to be or resize it with control T, edit transform scale, hold down shift, put this where you would like it to be, press enter to apply your transformation, take the watercolor layer, free up the background by double clicking if you need to, if it's locked, right click, duplicate your layer, so you have two copies of the watercolor, you're going to have this bottom layer right here, highlighted, you're going to make a new layer so it puts it right above it in between. You're going to have a watercolor, um, watercolor and then a white piece of paper and then watercolor. So I'm going to take my paint bucket, make sure my foreground color is white, make sure I'm highlighted on this new layer right here. I'm going to fill it in white. So I have watercolor, white piece of paper layer, exact same watercolor. Then I'm going to highlight my image layer, go to select, color range. In the color range window, I want image to be selected and I want to click on the white area of my picture. Then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to layer 0, copy my top watercolor stain layer. I'm going to hit delete. That will erase all of the white areas in my picture. Then I'm going to make sure that the top layer is invisible. I don't need that picture anymore. I'm going to hit Control D to deselect my selections. I actually don't love the way this one is right here, so I might have wanted to move this another way. So maybe I can hit Control Alt Z and step backward, and then I can move this picture somewhere else, make some slight adjustments before I cut it out. So I can go to Select, Color Range, choose the white, click OK, go to my top watercolor layer, press delete, hit control D to get rid of my pixels selections, 
go to layer one, make sure it is invisible, and then it's moved. It's actually, I think it's more interesting in this position. Then I can go to this white piece of paper layer and take care of the edges by erasing some of the edges right here with my opacity set to 100%. So I can touch up some of these edges to make it a little bit more interesting and less, less of a, um, less of a harsh edge in my picture. So you can go back and you can play with how you want the background to look and how much you want the watercolor to show up. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, good luck. I hope you have fun. Uh, learn to play with your options and make sure your stencil is really good. First, your threshold layer has good exposure and dodge and burns because that is what is going to determine how good this turns out.